Um, you just answered the uh, last question I had when we were talking about justifiable police shootings. But I, I want to ask you this question. I guess this, this could be an ending uh, question, if you will. Um, if a young person has grown up in an environment and they have shaped the mindset, perception-wise, that police officers can't be their friends, police officers can't be somebody that I can put a lot of confidence in because here's the history that uh, I've been connected to and all I've known all my life is is that I've been told that we can't befriend them. But my experience has led me to believe that usually when you see a homicide or a homicide occurs, those same victims' family members who didn't have a great relationship with the police department seek the services of the police. Um, how, how are they going to balance that, if you will? Now, I think you know where I'm going with this, is that the same ones that you didn't want to have a relationship, you're seeking a relationship right. for service now because you're in dire need of answers. Right. Uh, what, what would you like to share with young people about that whole perception of the police officers can't be a f person that they can befriend, but equally... If you didn't have blacks on the police department, what would the police department be at? Right. I mean, and, and, and it even ties into the whole little phenomenon of, of snitching and don't right. snitch and all that stuff. First, let me say this. You got to... This whole little campaign about don't snitch and a lot of young people are into that and wear the T-shirts, that is what the criminal element wants you to do. You need to, you need to, uh, you need to understand that criminals want you to be not communicate with the police. They want you to not snitch, not give out information, because uh, because when you do that, you're giving them uh, an, uh, an area to pray and to do their crime. That is the bottom line. Now, as it relates to having issues with the police, I understand that. But I think... That's well, a history that, that they've been... Right, talking. that's a history, and, 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 and a lot of African Americans, I have two teen, I have two grown men's sons, and we often have this conversation, and my response to them is, look, the police have a responsibility of providing safety in this community. There is no denying that, and there is a need for that. Your responsibility is to obey the law. Now, if you've got an issue with the police, there's one or two ways that you can fix that. Uh, I grew up in an environment where there's a lot of crime. I decided, and I saw things that police officers have done, and I still do, that... I, and I decided that I wanted to become a police officer and become a manager because I wanted to make the change from within. I have issues just like everybody else. My way of doing it is making the changes from within. Everybody don't want to do that and everybody can't do that. But I'm telling you, hold us accountable. You gotta, we, we're, we're the arm of government and society that's responsible to play the greatest role. Is that in, why you encourage young people to go file complaints? I, absolutely, and you know that I do that. Mm -hmm. If you got an issue with the police, you need to hold us accountable. Now, don't resolve the issue out there in the street with the, with, with the police officer because you're not no going to have a favorable outcome. They're required to give you their name, required to give you the badge number. Hold us accountable. Uh, ask questions. I, we do citizens at youth academies. You think the police, is, police officers are like everybody else. I got a wife and three kids. I got the same issues that everybody else have. Uh, uh, we are no different. We're, we, are, we are part of this society. We, are, we just chose a, a career in law enforcement. And many of us chose it because we think it's an admirable job and we want to help make a change. Now, the bad side of that is a lot of times when you're dealing with the police, it's always a response to something negative. Mm -hmm. So we get painted that, okay, something bad happened, got to call the police. Or uh, I'm going to get a ticket. The police officers are the ones that do it. Or somebody commits a crime, the police officers are the ones that lock them up. Or there was a shooting, uh, and the police officers are the person was shot. Well, those are the, that's one side of what we do. I mean, and we get paid to do a lot of those things. Do so you address sensitivity training with the public? We, every officer we have, every officer has a week of sensitivity training, 40 hours of sensitivity, sensitivity training. They, they, are, they understand the importance of doing things that are necessary that's greater than the standard of, of, of legality but our young people and in the community at large also has to understand and most of them respect most of the older adults respect the police but I know that young people have issues except the fact that we get paid to do a job 
and help us do the job. And if we're not doing the job the way that you think it needs to be done, you need to play an active role in addressing that. Either do it, either do it through registering your complaint, either do it uh, through your parent if you're not comfortable enough, either do it through an organization. But the bottom line is we are still to a great extent the last line, the first and the last line of defense domestically in our country. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're not the ones to be afraid of. I right. mean, and, and, and I will say this, I will close through this. There are good police officers and there are bad police officers. There are good lawyers and bad lawyers. Good teachers, bad teachers. I mean, we are like everyone else in this, in, in this world that we live in. There, I will tell you the 90% of the police officers out there are out there doing the job, doing it right, love the community, love people. But yeah, we have some that are not doing the right thing. But when you have an experience with that one that is not doing the right thing, don't paint the entire police department as in they're all of that way. Help me correct that issue by bringing it to our attention. And Colonel, let's end on this note. Um, what advice would you like to especially give a lot of young individuals who encounter an officer on the street if they get pulled over? What mistake Based on your experience for over 30 some years, do we make, as young individuals sometimes, in the way that uh, we handle that stop? And what could lead to an escalation of you being put in a position as a citizen to not win the battle with the police officer? I, I, I'm going to share with you or with our audience the same thing I share with my two young men. 90 Legally, whenever you get stopped by the police, there's a reason. Legally. When there's not a reason, that's when you need to get the officer's name, get his badge number, and you need to report it. Either you report it to, uh, if it's here in Louisville, you can report it to my office. And if you make a complaint, we investigate it 100% of the time. And that doesn't mean you're going to get the outcome that you want because it's two sides of every story. But what I will tell you is when you get stopped by the police, and let's just put you in a car, and they stop you. Either they're stopping you because you committed a traffic violation or there's some suspicious activity. So that means they have a course to stop you. But let's go with the easiest, traffic. You get stopped by the police for running a stop sign. You have all automatically forfeited certain rights of yours. Now you put your faith in the hand of a, some other person, a stranger, a police officer. Now that also has to decide, am I going to give you a ticket or not give you a ticket? And I will tell you, nine, seven out of ten times, they're going to make the decision based on your attitude. In other words, if you, you know, you want to challenge them, or I didn't do this, or I ain't got that, or you, you're going to be disrespectful, in their mind, you're already at wrong. So you're going to get, you're going to get the reason they stop you, if that's the ticket. Mm -hmm. Now, your greatest chance of getting out of that ticket, I suggest you do what I do when I get stopped by the police. Uh, also, you know, I wasn't paying attention, or, or you're, here's my license, here's my registration. Uh, I'm going to be, you know, I'll be, I'm going to be a little bit more observant the next time. Now the chances of me getting tickets are a lot less than the chances of you getting one. But I'm, I'm just saying, I will tell you from my own personal experience, your attitude will have a lot to do with the outcome. Now, you escalate it by becoming confrontational. Uh, and you certainly don't want to do that. And when, when I say escalate it, either you get the ticket or a, a simple traffic stop or a, a simple stop for something that was probably minor based on suspicion ends up getting you arrested because you get into a verbal confrontation that sometimes leads into a physical confrontation and now all of a sudden you're arrested. 